Hello, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. We are so glad you joined us today during this digital age. You could have tuned in anywhere else, but you chose PG, and we are incredibly grateful. Here's our pleasant planner for this week.
First of all, prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come before thy throne of grace and mercy. We ask for a special feeling of thy Holy Spirit of, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to your people, the saints of God, and especially to those who have not yet come to believe. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The title of this message is, Did Not Our Hearts Burn? Taken from Luke 24, 30. Read verses 30 to 32 from the Bible. Two disciples of Jesus were walking along the road, leading back to their village of Emmaus, located about seven miles west of Jerusalem. Cleopas and his companion, unnamed, Mark 16, 12, and 13. Mark 16, 12, and 13 says, And after that, he, Jesus, appeared in another form post-resurrection 
appearance of our Lord unto two of them as they walked along the road and went into the country. Verse 13, and they went and told the residue, which is the citizens, neither believe they them. The two disciples were unable to recognize this stranger who had come along side. These questions, for their eyes were restricted from knowing him. Jesus asked, what manner of communication that causes you such sadness? Why are you so sad? And Cleopas says, you must be a stranger in town who have come along beside them. Jesus asks, what manner of conversation that causes you such sadness? Why are you so sad? And Cleopas answer said, you must be a stranger in town to have not known the things that have come to pass this day. Our Lord asks, what things concerning this Jesus of Nazareth, who was a mighty prophet in deed and in word, and how the chief priests and rulers condemned him to death and crucified him. We trust it. And how the chiefs, priests, and rulers had condemned him to death, crucified him. We trusted that he would be the one who would redeem Israel and take down the Roman rule over Palestine. The two mentioned that certain women of their company had gone to the sepulchre, sepulchre earlier in the third day at sunrise and found not his body, but went hurriedly to inform the other disciples about the risen Christ. The classroom dialogue at the roadside between Jesus and two of his disciples begins like this. Jesus says, O foolish men and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ be had to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Cleopas and his companion experienced the unique privilege of having the word teach them the word. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, Jesus, the risen Jesus, expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, Jesus Christ. The risen Lord explained the scriptures to them. In doing so, the Lord Jesus gave them the key to understanding of the scriptures, that he himself is subject of the entire book, and in him the book finds its unity. 1 Corinthians 16, 9 states, He, Jesus, opened the door as an opportunity to spread the gospel to the world. From the church, from the effectual going forth of his gospel, we as born-again saints of God must seize the opportunity to witness the gospel from the door of our new heart to all people, holding nothing back, the whole word of God. Brothers and sisters, we must go forward through these doors of opportunity 
to witness for him. And Jesus went with them to their home in the village. They constrained him in parentheses. Here, constrain means to force someone or something to urge, to coerce. And he says, the day is far spent. It's nearing sundown. It's time to have the evening meal, which means set at meat. Spiritually, place yourselves at this small table. The oven baked bread is blessed by Jesus. And he broke portions and gave it to them in parentheses. It's a picture, a type of the Last Supper to come. Verse 5, and their eyes were open, recognized the stranger they had invited to dine with them in their home. While the bread was passed, the disciples saw the nail prints where he had been nailed to the cross, and they knew him as the resurrected Christ in their midst. Flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Christ has come back from the dead. Their physical eyes were open, of course. But when they saw the blood-stained wounds, their spiritual eyes were open. And they knew that this was the resurrected Christ, whom they had just seen three days ago, hanging on the cross, at Golgotha's Hill. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall be like him as he is, large letters, just like the disciples at the dining room table, seated for the evening meal. One of the Gospels commented, did not our hearts burn? And another said, the hearts of the disciples was full of light. Their minds are aflame with seeing the resurrected Christ sitting at their table, eating bread, consuming with them, praying with them, and seeing them is almost unbelievable. Seeing the nail prints in his hands as the bread is passed around. Since they trusted the two disciples in all that he might teach them from the scriptures, are greatly enjoyed to have been with the risen Messiah. The Holy Spirit has to say something concerning this teaching of the scriptures to his disciples is this, Luke 3 and 1. Their eyes were open to see the human Christ was sitting at their table. Revelation 3 and 8, their hearts were open to receive the word of the Lord. Their ears were open to the sound of the voice of him whose voice can be a whisper to calm an angry sea. Peace be still. Hallelujah. Their ears were open as he talked with them concerning the scriptures. Luke 24, 32. Luke 24, 45. Their understanding as he spoke about the Old Testament and the New Testament and to know the scriptures and how they must be fulfilled according to the law of Moses and the prophets. 
Lastly, I'll summary. When did your hearts burn for Christ? Was it the day he found you? Was it at a time when you were in crisis? Was your heart burning a flame when the nails were there in his hands for you? For we see him as he is, our Lord, our Savior, the one who shed his precious blood for you, you, and me. For he would not come down that Friday over 2,000 years ago. Instant salvation was given to the thief on the right, not the left, with the words when he says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus dies, gives up his spirit to the Father. Three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. Early, real early, Sunday morning, he rose. He's alive with all power in his hands. Our Christ has risen from the dead. Hallelujah, resurrection. He's alive with all power in heaven and in the earth in his hand. And he makes a statement. O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where is thy victim? With his resurrection, these were answered once and for all, all time. Thank God he rose for our justification, our salvation, and our eternal life. Finish, fini. Thank you for making It's time to worship through giving. Give online at pgmbcstl.org or mail in your tithes and offering at the address below. Hopefully the word was relevant and relatable. If you'd like to connect to Christ through our church, shoot us an email at ghpruitt at gmail.com. We are always excited to reaffirm our relationship with you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.